It's the end of March and almost April, so it's time for a budget Easter build. With hopefully more specials to come for Easter, here is a budget PC for New Zealand. Now compare this one to the old one that I made in December of 2023, there is a little bit of a difference. One is the price, it's a little bit more expensive to what it was before, so just keep that in mind. But at the same time, there are differences such as a larger SSD for storage or a better CPU that we have here. So stick around to the end so I can show you some differences for parts that will affect the total price. Let's get started. Starting off, we've got the CPU here and I've gone with the AMD Ryzen 5 5600 coming in at 228.85 from PB Tech or 229 from Computer Lounge. Now I personally own this CPU and it's actually pretty good um, in games, especially going for me from a Ryzen 7 3700X to this 5600. It's a little bit of an upgrade in eSport titles, but at the same time it's got that good price to performance at 229. You know, it is a little bit more expensive than the i3 12100F or 13100F or whatever it is now. But at the same time, it does provide a slight improvement in performance in games. So in my opinion, I'm going to go for this one in this build. I can also vouch for it. It's in my PC at the moment. I got mine for 200 a couple of years ago, but that was on a crazy special. So 229 is not too bad at all for the CPU. Now, if you guys want to have a look at alternatives, as I said, the i3 12100F or 13100F now is $205, so it is a viable option and even compared to before on the CPU was $189 from first wave, so it was more of an attractive price back then than it is now, but at the same time it's only $200, so I mean if you guys don't want to spend that extra, you could, could go with the 13100F if you wanted to, or even if you wanted to go even further down the... Uh, Ryzen 5 5500 here is it's pretty cheap as well at 159 in New Zealand so it's a six core processor as well and it's going to perform okay and you guys get to save about what's that $40 on the 13100F if you guys want to go the AMD route so either one of the two should be good if you're going to stick on a budget. Now personally I don't like the stock cooler on the Ryzen 5 5600 so for this build I'm going to choose a Thermalite Peerless Assassin 120SE. Now this comes in at $79 from Computer Lounge and this comes with two RGB fans and with the cooler as well. It's a really good value CPU cooler. I don't actually own one but I've seen lots of reviews online. They look really good and overall it looks like a high quality tower cooler that's going to last you quite a while. Now keep in mind on this original price here I actually haven't included it so if you guys want to keep it really budget you don't have to include this one. If you don't want to, the 5600 does come with stock cooler. It's this rate stealth that I personally don't really like. It is a little bit loud, but this is a good option and uh, $80 extra if you guys want to add that on. Now, if you're going to get this tower cooler as well, I'd probably suggest that you get a little fan hub as well. This one's $12 from Computer Lounge. Now, honestly, you can get them anywhere. I get mine from AliExpress for around about $5 or you can get them from Trade Me as well for around about $10 about the same price um, as they are from Computer Lounge so this should do well. It's not exactly needed because you can daisy chain on the fans that are going to be included in the case I'm going to show you later but at the same time you know it's just a little bit easier if you're going to add fans or just have it all in one place. It's a lot easier for cable management in my opinion. Now next we have the motherboard. Now I've chosen the MSI B550 Pro VDH. It's a Wi-Fi board, which is cool. And it has a little bit of cooling on the VRM, which is awesome. You know, at the same time, it is $195 from First Wave or $199 from PB Tech that are out of stock. And the next is $209 from Computer Lounge. So it is a bit of a more expensive board, especially to what else you can choose um, on the AM4 sides. You know, you can get a Gigabyte B450 MK for around about 159 New Zealand so that's a lot cheaper but at the same time I didn't pick it just because it literally doesn't have any cooling on the VRM like whatsoever that's just the only reason I picked the MSI one over that one and as well it is the B550 chipset the other thing to consider here is that some of the B450 and B550 boards are just PCIe Gen 3 so just keep that in mind if you have a Gen 4 SSD that you're wanting to put in this build so that's the reason I've gone for the Pro VDH. I think it's a good board with it. Okay, VRM cooling here. It's not like you're going to be overclocking too much on this board anyways. So 
I think it's good for what it is. Yeah. Next, we have the RAM, which is the Kingston Fury B16 gigs DDR4 3200 CL16. Comes in at $67 from Mighty Ape and $72.99 from PB Tech. It's a basic kit of RAM that's gonna do you okay on the Ryzen 5 5600. Now, personally, I have a Samsung B die kit on my one, and I could definitely say it's it's pretty decent. But overall, you know, on a budget, I don't think this kit's gonna hinder your performance in any of it. Um, it will just do you well enough for this PC, <laughs> and you probably won't notice too much of a difference in any case. Next, we have the storage, and I've gone with the Crucial P3 one terabyte M.2 SSD. It's one hundred ten dollars and seventy eight cents from PB Tech at the moment. It's actually not too badly priced. Now there are definitely some other M.2 SSDs, the one terabyte ones that you could go for, such as the Samsung 970 Evo, the 980, and the 980 Pro if you want to, if you can get that on special. Those are all pretty good. And also the, in terms of SATA SSDs, the Samsung 870 EVO is decent, as well as the Crucial MX500, also pretty good drives. So any of those options will do pretty well. As for the hard drive, as I always say, if you're going to be on a budget, try to get something second hand. But just keep in mind not to put any sensitive information on the drive or stuff you can't risk to lose. So that's a good option, you know, like one terabyte for around about 35 to 40 New Zealand dollars is a little bit expensive, but it's okay. A really good price for one terabyte in New Zealand would be anywhere from 25 to 30, but 35 to 40 would be okay. You could probably get a two terabyte drive off trade me for around about 40 to 45 dollars ish on a good price usually. So just keep that in mind and as well also make sure that the disk is ac the hard drive is actually not too used. It's power on count hours are not too high. It doesn't have any errors in the sectors. Just make sure you ask for that stuff before you buy the drive. Next we have the graphics card. I've gone with the Asus Dual. RX 6600. It comes in at $366.56 from PB Tech, and it's an 8 gig card only, but I think it's decent for a budget build. Now, like to be honest, in this sub 500 category in New Zealand, there really aren't that many options brand new. Now, there are a lot of options secondhand. I've seen a few RTX 3070s go for under 400 ish New Zealand, so keep that in mind second hand is pretty good deals at the moment for graphics cards especially if you're willing to spend anywhere from two to four hundred dollars new zealand there's some pretty goddamn good deals out there but if you only want to buy brand new this is probably the car to go for sub 500 and we're keeping it as budget as possible and it will do you well in most games at 1080p so nothing too much to complain about so next up from the graphics card, we have the RX 7600 at $510.99. Now this performs obviously better than the 6600 um, in terms of the benchmarks I've seen. So looks pretty decent and $510.99 isn't too bad for this card um, at all. Now just keep in mind that they are like other cards like the RTX 4060 that you can choose for 549 which performs similarly to the 7600 it just depends on what titles they're on but in my opinion if you're gonna go up in that price level I'd probably pick this card over the RTX 4060 unless you really like Nvidia for some reason and have some reason to choose it then the next Nvidia card would be the RTX 4060 now Personally, I would choose the 7600 over the 4060, but that's just my personal preference. And it's a lot cheaper as well. Next, we have the case. Now, this is the Fantex XT Pro Ultra, and I think it's a case that came out recently, and it's at a decent price at PB Tech. It's $106.18. Now, it comes with four fans, one exhaust, and three intake, which is pretty good, and they are able to be daisy chained. But at the same time, we do have that fan hub if need be. So won't really have too many issues here. But if you if you pick this and you go with the cooler, I'd probably say to get the fan hub. It would just make life a lot easier. Um, or you can get those $5 hubs off AliExpress. Literally the same thing. You can buy two of them if you'd like. So overall, this case is decent with the 
front airflow as well and the cable management isn't too bad at the back the bay is a little bit small here but everything should fit okay into this case a little bit of a tight squeeze for cable management but it looks like a decent case from what i've seen online nothing too special a good budget case and uh, with a lot of decent airflow and it comes with rgb fans which is nice as well next we have the power supply and this is the fractal design ion 2 platinum now, this is 169 from computer lounge and i actually think this is a decent price for this power supply it is one of the highest rated power supplies on the cultist tier list i believe so it will be able to supply power pretty well overall. <laughs> it's platinum rated as well, so efficiency, efficiency should be decent as well. 660 watt, which I think is more than enough for this build. I don't think the wattage of this build will be very high, especially for example if you choose the 6600 and the Ryzen 5 5600. Even if you overclock the 5600, you won't even be taking that much up in any case. And at 169, I think that's a pretty good price. And even compared to before, for 149 was the 550 watts. So this isn't too badly priced overall for the power supply. So that about sums up the build as a whole. Now the parts that I will be including in this total price if I were to build this myself is just the included cooler here for the Thermalite Peerless Assassin. So if I add that on there, so I'd add the fan hub and the cooler as well and it comes to $1,348.37. Now that is quite a bit of money to be honest like overall um, but at the same time there are places where you can cut the price you can go with a 500 gig SSD if you wanted to you could get a second hand case you could get a better graphics card for the same price second hand you could go with the i3 13100F if you wanted to here, save a little bit of money, or even go with the 5500, or you can go second hand with the AM4 platform, there's a lot of good deals for like Ryzen 5 3600s, there's some pretty good deals under 150 sometimes, so there are cost saving measures that you could make if you're willing to spend a little bit second hand, but overall that's the total cost if I were to build this PC today. So that about sums it up for this budget build. I hope this video isn't too long. It's a little bit long, but that's all right. So make sure you guys go and check out wisetech.org for some more awesome technology content. But other than that, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.